Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Bard Actor Channel. Thanks, thanks, and ever thanks for stopping on by. I am Bard Actor, and today I am joined by a great actor and a very good friend, Billy Chase. Welcome, Billy. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bard Actor. We're glad to be. Oh, what do you? Billy and I are here today to help out Stephanie Peace from Blossom, Texas, who asks, "What is onomatopoeia?" Well, Stephanie. Onomatopoeia is a word that comes from Greek. It literally means the word I make. Ba boom! <laughs> yeah. It, in a nutshell, it is a word created or used to imitate, resemble, or suggest the sound it makes. Woo, Kachoos! Are you going to help me answering this question? I just did. What? You see, Stephanie, if if you really want to see onomatopoeia in action, all you have to do is open up a, a comic book. Or, or, or a graphic novel. They're, they're chock full of onomatopoeic words, like um, wham, bam, uh, swish, thunk. Good point. Or you can simply ask yourself, what sound does a cat make? Or if you're a dog owner, a dog. Or a cow, if you inexplicably find yourself in the middle of a cow pasture. Meow, woof, and moo are all onomatopoeic words. Yeah. Why is onomatopoeia so important in language and in Shakespeare? Oh, let's well, get, let's hey. get back to the graphic novel, or the comic book for a second. Uh, a, a graphic novel or a comic book provides a visual of the characters, and to some degree the action, but with no sound. By using onomatopoeic words, the story comes to life in our imagination. We hear the vroom of a truck approaching over the course of several panels. We hear the whoosh of an object as it, as it moves through the air, even though we can only see a, a frozen image of it. This, this added soundscape actually adds to the action, with, with many a captive reader forgetting that they are actually looking at a still image. Shakespeare? Not really that much different. Shakespeare had actors and some props and some minimal furniture and some rudimentary sound effects, but not much else in terms of production values. So what did Shakespeare do? Well, it could be argued that the plays themselves are onomatopoeic, to be not just dialogue, but to also act as the soundtrack and the sound effects for his scenes. Take King Lear. Ding, ding. All alone, out in the storm, his mind beginning to crack from all the stress, so he decides to use the storm to do the work for him. Except, Shakespeare goes one better and uses Lear's speech to be both the storm in his head and the storm all around him. Ooh, you want to take a crack at that speech, Billy? My pleasure. Try to listen to how the words sound instead of what they mean, and, and, you, and you might actually find that you hear both the crazed fallen old man and the storm going on around him. Okay. Letter rip. Blow winds and crack your cheeks. Rage. Blow, you cataracts and hurricanoes. Spout till you have drenched our steeples. Drown the cocks, you sulfurous and thought-executing fires. Vaunt couriers to oak-cleaving thunderbolts. Singe my white head. And now, all oh, shaking thunder, strike flat the thick rotundity of the world. Crack nature's molds, all oh, Germans spill at once, that make ingrateful man rumble thy bellyful, spit fire, spout rain! And bam, that just happened. So, Stephanie, I hope that helped you. Billy, thank you so much. Oh, not a problem. Glad to pop on by. Huh. Thanks. Thanks. And, and ever, ever thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. And until next time, the rest is silence. If you would like a shout out, a dedication made, or a question answered during an episode, just leave a request in the comments. Thanks, thanks, and ever thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, and until next time, the rest is silence.